pleasant good morning once again. It is indeed my pleasure to be back with you here on YouTube. God has been very good to us and every day we get another opportunity to uh, spend life on earth. We should make sure that we utilize that period we, we got um, usefully and, and make sure that we don't uh, take life for granted and that we continue to share the word of God, especially with those who don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. Uh, this morning, I um, want to speak on a subject that all believers should be made aware of. And I think that once we become aware of where we start in a battle, I think it would make a whole lot of difference because then we would recognize that, listen, we're starting, wherever we're starting, we are always ahead. And this morning, I want to speak to you from the book of Judges, uh, Judges chapter 7, uh, reading uh, from verse 1, and I'm just going to read up to verse 7, and then I'll take the message from there. Then Jerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early, and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them, by the hill of Moriah, in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into your hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, My own hand have saved me. Now therefore, Go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead, and there return of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remain ten thousand. So we realize that there was thirty two thousand, and twenty two thousand went back. And only 10,000 remain. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee right there. And it shall be, that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go. So he brought down the people unto the water, and the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink, and the number of them that lappeth put it their hand into their mouth, were three hundred men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. There is something significant about that. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By three hundred men that lapped, will I save you, and deliver the Midianite into thine hand, and let all the other people go, every man, unto his place. This is so profound, and as children of God, we need to recognize this particular fact. There is not a day that the child of God is not in a battle. Let me repeat that again. There is not a day that the child of God is not involved or engaged in battle. And battles comes in different ways, different type, different sizes. But I want to let the child of God know this morning that they have the advantage going into battle. And I want to make this pollucid so that every child of God will know that whenever there's a battle, they're going into battle with the advantage. And you might ask, how is that so, Pastor? Let me make some things clear this morning. Every child of God going into battle need to know that number one they're not going into battle alone 
even if they're by themselves, every child of God needs to know that they do not go into battle alone. And that's a key. Knowing that you are going into battle and you're not going in alone. The second thing that we need to understand is that we're not going in alone. And this might be the most pertinent of all the points. Because you know what? If you're not going in alone, then the question is, who are we going in with? And we need to know that every battle that we fought or will fight, Jesus Christ is with us into every battle. So one, we're not going in alone. Two, every battle, Christ is there with us. Three, before we start to fight, we are winners. We're not fighting from the standpoint of losing to win, but we're starting from the standpoint that we are winners. My God, what, what, what a powerful promise. What a powerful thing to know that, listen, we are going into battle with the advantage that we are already winners. Doesn't matter how the situation looks. We need to understand that we are winners. What's number four? We are not responsible for the battle strategies. Let me repeat that. The child of God is not responsible for the battle strategy. God is. Our responsibility is to carry out the strategies that have been laid down for us. Let me, let me repeat that again. We are not responsible for the battle strategies. God is. Our responsibility is to carry out the strategies that has been laid out for us. Let's look at the next point because this is very important. Usually, naturally man thinks the bigger the better. With God, that does not necessarily be true. With God, the bigger the army is not necessarily the better. The bigger the army sometimes is where God says you need to reduce. So bigger, when it comes to the Christian faith, might not necessarily be better. It all depends on God's battle strategy for that particular time. Now, as we look at this particular scripture, what we can see here without a shadow of a doubt is that the children of Israel were in problems because they were coming up against an army that is much bigger than they are or they were. And so it is important to note that they were outnumbered possibly outweaponed and there were so many things that were against them. I want to make this clear this morning that the child of God does not need to concern him or herself with how many persons that are against them. What they need to be concerned with is who is with them. That's the most powerful thing that you will ever hear. It is not who is against you. It is not what who against you have to use against you. It's who is with you as a child of God that matters the most. Let me say this. With Christ in your vessel, you can smile at every storm. With Christ in your vessel, you know that whatever it is, you will end up winning and so this is what we are looking at this morning the question is how do i fight and win as a believer we are supposed to be winners and so the question is how do we fight and win we are already going in with a number of advantage 
to us, our advantages to us. And so the question is, then how do we continue this battle and end up winning? And there's some key points that I want us to understand. Going into battle, and this coincides with what I've mentioned before, going into battle, the child of God need to recognize that the battle is not ours, the battle belongs to God. You see the, you see another advantage again? Once we are going into battle and we recognize that the battle is not ours, the battle belongs to the Lord, then who can overpower God? Who can win God? And so when we are going into battle, we must remember this, the battle belongs to God. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into your hand. You know this? It is God who is going to give the Midianites into um, Gideon's hand. Not Gideon is going to work his way and get them into his hand. And so we see right here from the answer that the Bible is clearly stating to us that, hey, listen, the battle is not ours the battle belongs to the lord and so that's number one if then the battle is the lord then he should watch this if the battle or since the battle belongs to the lord then he should determine the amount of persons that goes into that battle not us and sometimes we end up in problems as children of God because when situation faces us what we do we run to people for help and we bring some people on board that are no good for the, for the battle but make matters worse for us and so we need to understand that if the battle belongs to God then God determines how many person he wants to be in that battle fighting with us. And if you notice from this chapter, what God did, God wanted to show that, listen, this battle, Gideon, is not yours. And so you're not going to take 32,000 men to no battle. I'm going to reduce this battle, um, this, these men, to what I want to show you that it is not your battle, it is mine's. Very important to note. As children of God, we must also remember the victory is not for our glory, but for God's glory. Please, remember this. The victory is not for our glory, but it's for God's glory. And when you look at verse 3, it makes it so clear from verse 2 going to verse 3, makes it very clear that it was God's battle and God is determining the battle's plan. And listen to what he said. And the Lord said to Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, my own hand hath saved me. Let me tell you something. God is not going to give you the victory if you're going to boast about yourself. This is exactly what the word vaunt means. It actually means, I am not going to give Israel the victory with 32,000 men because Israel will say, look at what we do and not look at what God did. And so it is important for us to know it is not for us to boast what we did but to boast of what God has done for us. Every battle that a Christian engages in and wins, it's as a result of what God has done. And so when we are boasting about our victories, we must be boasting on God and not ourselves. If we look at John chapter 14 and verse 13, we will see something there which is very important. John 14, 13, and this is what he says. 
And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You notice that? Whatever we want and we ask in accordance with God's will, God will grant it not for us to boast about ourselves, but that the Father will be glorified. In this um, chapter of Judges, God was saying the same thing here. I am not going to allow you to go in with 32,000 men because if you do, you're going to boast and say, it is as a result of our doing why we were able to accomplish this task. And God is saying, no, it's not going to happen. This victory is going to be as a result of my strategy, my doing, leaving me God alone or I God alone to get the glory, not man. And so we need to understand that. If we're going to fight and win, we have to understand that God is the one who determines the number. Number two, God is the one who must get the glory and not man. Number three, if we're going to win, we must place our faith and trust in God and not in numbers. Let me repeat that. If we are going to fight and win, we must place our faith and confidence in God and not in numbers. Now, most of us in, this, in the place of Gideon would have been questioning God as to um, how come you're reducing the numbers when we are already on the man? We only have 32,000 and you're reducing our 32,000 to even less? God, come on. But you see what? Gideon trusted God. God had already demonstrated to Gideon who he is. And so it becomes easy for Gideon to put his faith and trust in God and not in the numbers. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23 made the very important point that we need to know. And this is what it says in verse 23. And Jesus said unto them, to him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. Because Gideon had already proven God, God has demonstrated to Gideon that he is God and that every battle that he had ever fought, he had won. Gideon recognized that, listen, this has nothing to do with numbers. This has to do with faith and trust in God. Every child of God must remember this. Every situation in your life, it has nothing to do with what the doctors say. It has nothing to do with the numbers that are against us. It has to do with what God says. It has to do with our faith that we place in God. It has to do with our confidence that we place in God. Hey, many of us are faced in difficult situations. Some of them are the most impossible situations. But God has brought us through them all. And only God deserves the glory. And only God deserves the praise. Because outside of God, it would have been totally impossible for this thing to take place. Hallelujah. God is truly worthy to be praised. And so we need to understand that if we're going to win this battle, our faith and confidence must be in Almighty God. The other thing that we need to understand about this, which is very pertinent, if we're going to go to battle, we cannot go to battle with those persons that are afraid and trembling. Come on. You know what the Bible says? Without Faith, it is impossible to please God. One of the greatest turnoffs that you can have as a believer going into battle is to have a man or woman or people around you who are discouraging, who are faithless, and full of nothing but fear. As a matter of fact, I want to make this clear this morning. 
We need to understand that fear is the opposite of faith. And if you're going to take people into a battle that requires faith and they are completely fearful, they will become distractions and they might become casualties. And that's the reason why God said to Gideon, listen, find out from those persons who are fearful and are trembling. And when you find out who they are, don't keep them. Send them home. They are no use to you. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Gideon had to have faith and trust in God. And with Gideon's faith and trust in God, can you imagine 22,000 people telling Gideon that we are outnumbered? We are outweaponed? What do you think would happen? And so God is so wise that he says, Gideon, ask them, whisper in their ears, find out from them, hey, are you fearful? Are you trembling? Yes. Okay, home. Are you fearful? And Gideon did that. And 22,000 men that were with Gideon were actually full of fear and filled with trembling. Those people going to battle with them is not the wisest thing to do. Going to battle and you find these people around you, you need to send them home. You see, some of us enjoy the crowd and some of us, these are the very people that we're seeking advice from. God is saying, they are no good for you going into a battle. Our battles as Christians should not be based on what we are seeing, but who we know is in charge of the battle that we are about to fight. So those 22,000 people, they had to go home. You see, sometimes the people we have around us, we're so attached to them, and we're so accustomed to them in everything, but there are some battles that God will say, listen, keep what you have. But there are some battles that God is going to say, no, 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 no. Reduce the number. Now, let's look at something else. Because we recognize in this same book, something that is, is, is very powerful. There are times when God will allow some people to come into your life. And they have their part to play. But then after that, God will say, listen, you have too many people around you. Reduce the number. That is exactly what God did to Gideon. He reduced it from 32,000 to 10,000. But again, in spite of the number, God is saying 10,000 is too much. The people will still believe that it is as a result of their doing why they were able to win the battle. And so God says, listen, even though the numbers around you might have been reduced, God wants the number to be further reduced again for his glory. One of the things that we do as Christians, we're equipped to act. Let me say this this morning. When we are acting, we must make sure that our instructions to act comes from God. We must not as Christians take matters into our hands and make any decision pertaining to church without God's instruction. We must not make any decision about our family, about our own personal lives without God's instructions. Now, God wanted the number to be reduced. And notice what he did. He says, Gideon, you take them down to the river or take them down to the water. And guess what? Pastors, bishop, apostles, prophet, whoever you are,
pay attention to this. He says, you, Gideon, take them down to the water. But listen to what God says. And I will test them for you. Not you. You don't test God's people. God just follow the instruction. The Lord said unto Gideon, they are yet too many. Bring them down onto the water and I will try them for thee. It is God who's supposed to try the people around us. Let me tell you something. When God try them, it's a fair trial and it's the best trial there will be. Let me tell you something. There's a man. It's one of Israel's greatest prophet and, and judge. His name was Samuel. And God sent him to a home to find a king, to choose a king. Notice this man was a prophet, anointed man of God. And he went there. And when he went there, guess what? The first person he saw, he says, he said, must be the man of God. The second, the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. And he was wrong six times. Can you imagine? We as human, in spite of the anointing upon our lives, can make mistakes. That's the reason why. Sometimes the people that are around us, that look as if they are nobody, they are not even spiritual. Those are the people that are most spiritual. And not some of those people that make the most nice. And so we need to understand that we must allow God to test the people and to determine which group of people must go to the next stage with us. That's what he told Gideon. And that is important for us to know. Look at this. He says, Gideon, take them down to the waters. So he brought down the people onto the waters. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lapped of the waters with his tongue as a dog lap it, him shall thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that bowed down upon his knees to drink. You notice how God determines who goes which way and who goes where? Watch what happens here. There are times, as I said, that we will misjudge. But God does not ever make a bad judgment. His judgment is always accurate. His judgment is always true. And so, we look at something here. Those that went down and lap with their hands were 300. And God said, by 300 Gideon, I am going to give the Midianites into your hands. And that is important for us to note. It is so important for us to know these things. And the problem that we have too many times, what we see happening is that people have a tendency to follow their feelings. They have a tendency to follow what they think rather than follow what God is saying. And this is where sometimes that we tend to mess up. And so we need to bear these things in mind. Watch this. We might ask ourselves, what's the significance of those who knelt down and put their heads in the water to drink? Because that was 9,700 that did that. And only 300 actually lapped with their hands, meaning put in the water to their mouth and drink. And God said, that 300 is the 300 I want to use. Let me show you something that I observe about those men and women who place their trust and confidence in God. And this is taken from 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 6. And this is exactly what we're seeing here with Gideon. And I'm going to tell you something about those who lacked. Listen to what Jonathan said in 1 Samuel chapter 14 and verse 6. And this is 
This is just such a powerful, powerful piece of scripture that we all need to pay attention to. And listen, listen to what it says. And Jonathan said to the young man that bear his armor, come and let us go unto the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. Let me, let, let, me, let, me, let me read that again. Let me read that again. For those of you who like to doubt and like to have plenty of people around you when there's battle time, you need to read this particular scripture because it's going to help you. Listen to what it says. And Jonathan said to the young man, notice, it was Jonathan and the young man alone. And Jonathan said, listen, come and let us go over unto the garrison of this uns these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us, for there is no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. You know what that is saying? It is not up to Jonathan and it is not up to Gideon how many person is up to God. But God decides whether he saved by many or he saved by few. And Jonathan discovered that God many a times saved by few. So the 300 that went with Gideon was more than enough. Now let's look at this. When we look at this, we have to understand that if we're going to win this battle, the child of God must follow God's instruction. You can't do what you like. It's not your battle. The battle belongs to God. And so we have to understand in this battle, God determines what goes. He sets the instruction not us. So he says, going down, he says, set apart those who lap with their hand. Let me show you something. Can you imagine going into battle? The people we are about to fight, and let me make this clear. The, the Galatians says, Every day there's a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. Every day there's a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. So the life of the Christian is a life of battle. Can you imagine going into battle and kneeling down on the ground with the enemy so close by and putting your head down in the water to drink? That is treason it's like you are not concerned about the enemy who is not far away from you and that's why those people were not back ready they had to go home that 9700 had to go home because they were not concerned that there is a battle uh, about to be fought the enemy is just a few yards or whatever away and they were putting their heads in the water. You see those that lap with their hands? That shows preparation. That shows that they were concerned. They were drinking, but they were watching. Let me tell you this this morning. Be careful with some of those people you have around you. Because some of them, they are not watchers. When we're going to battle, we don't need laziness. We don't need slackful people. We need people who are ready to watch. And that's why Jesus, in that tenth time of his temptation, said to the disciples, Watch and pray. If we're going to go into battle, we need people who knows what it is to watch and pray. In, in, in battle times, there is no time for us to be coming um, to the place where we become relaxed and unconcerned. In battle, we need to stay focused. And so those people who pick the water up and lap it with their mouth, those persons are the people that you want around you. They are on guard. They are looking out. They are praying and they are watching. And so when we look at this, 
When God told Gideon, listen, Gideon, you watch for those who lock with their hands. What that was showing was simply this, that when you're going to battle, make sure the people that you have are people who, one, knows God's word. Because God told Gideon what to look for. And what God said to Gideon was God's word. So watch for the person who knows God's word, who is concerned and now watching. And the other thing, watch for those persons who know how to pray. Those people will always get you out of trouble because they are watching, they know the word, and they are praying. That's why Gideon Jan was reduced to 300 because God only wants those people who will obey his promise, who will be watching, and who will be praying. Three key things for us to win the battle that we are involved in. What else do we see here from Gideon? What else is, is important here that we need to see? And, and, and I want us to just turn quickly here to Psalms 26 and, and verse 2 because we have to understand that in everything there is a, 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 a follow-up to it. And it is important that we know what the Bible says about certain things before we just run about our business doing what we like. Listen to what it says. Those of us who don't want to be proven and tried, that's our business. But listen to what Psalm 26 2 says. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reign and my heart. Some of the people that are around us, that's what we need to allow God to do. Try their reign, prove their heart. Because listen, there are some people around us. They are physically around us, but spiritually they are not. As children of God, we need that spirit of discernment to know who is who so that when we are going to battle that we are going to battle with the right people now let's look at psalm 66 10 also just to add another scripture so that you know you can have something to follow psalm 66 and verse 10 and this is what it says for thou o god has proved us thou hast tried us as silver is tried listen those people that you're going to battle with must be people who have been tried and tested. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Let me explain to you something. Watch this. Sometimes we take some novices into battle and taking them to battle, when they came out, they were even worse than they went in. What we need to do when we're going to battle and we need warriors, we need soldiers, what we need to do as children of God is to find those people that God has placed on our hearts and allow those, watch those people because they should have been already gone through the experiences or similar experiences. So they know what it is to watch, they know what it is to follow God's promises and they know what it is to pray. It is important that those people that we're going to battle with are soldiers with experience. It is important. Some battle, some battles you can't take inexperience into them. You will end up injuring yourself because while you're looking about yourself and looking about others, you have to be looking about babies. God is saying, if you're gonna go into battle, look for those persons who have been tried and tested, who God has given an opportunity to be tested so that they can come and become an encouragement to you in that time of crisis. Now let's move on in the interest of time. The other thing that we need to understand is this. The instructions that are given are not debatable. When God gives us instructions, they're not debatable. Now notice, 
I'm using the term debatable because some of us, we want to question God and reason with God and want to tell God how, how much we know why he should not. Are you forgetting that we're talking to the all-knowing God? You notice Gideon? Gideon never questioned God. Every instruction that God gave Gideon, Gideon followed them. Gideon knew God, and Gideon knew that his God is a God that is trustworthy and will never fail. And so Gideon followed all of God's instructions. What else do we do, do we see coming out of this 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 victory that 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 Gideon um was about to to gain? Some people say that this is the Gideon man, but for me, I'm seeing this as Gideon teaching us as believers how to fight and win. And if we follow these steps, I guarantee you that we will fight and not just win, but we will fight and always win. Now, number six, believe God's promises. It doesn't matter how foolish they look. If God promise or tells us to do something, and so his promise and his instructions, if you notice, they come one behind the other. They are important for us to remember. Believe God's promises. Follow God's instructions. And let me show you how important it is. Sometimes God's instructions to the human look foolish. Oh, Lord of mercy. Jesus of mercy. Because sometimes we place our humanness ahead of the instructions that God is giving. And then we mess up. Can you imagine a fortified city called Jericho? And we want to win and gain entry into Jericho so that we can destroy Jericho. And God is telling us, march around Jericho how many times? Does that sound like sense? But the only how the walls of Jericho will come down is if we obey God's command. And this is exactly what God is saying. When I promise you something, listen to what he says. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by 300 men that lap, I will save you and deliver the Midianites into thine hand. And let all the other people go, every man unto his own place. Hey, that's a promise. God says, listen, Gideon, I'm going to use 300 men. I'm using 300 men to give you the Midianites. 300. Marching around Jericho sounds stupid, but that's the instruction that God gave to Joshua. And guess what happened? Once you follow the command, it doesn't matter how foolish it looks. God is the one who promised and God will bring his promise to pass. Let's look at um, Joshua chapter 10 and verse 8. Joshua chapter 10 and verse 8. Let's see what happens here. And this is what it says in verse 8. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not them. For I have delivered them into thine hands. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Hey, listen, if God promised that, hey, you know what? You can go and sleep with the enemy all around your house. Because God says in his word, don't fear them. Not one of them will remain standing. Let me tell you something. Some of us are going through some real difficult times. There are people at our job. There are people at our church. There are people at our play. There are people wherever we go who are seeking to see our demise. And God has said to us, hey, listen, don't worry about them. They will not be able to destroy you. So even if, listen to, listen, listen, listen to David. 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I want somebody to hear this this morning. Some child of God that is worried about what's going to happen because I lost my job. What's going to happen because I, I, I lost my husband. What's going to happen because, let me tell you something, God have you. You are covered. Those people who want to see your demise, stop worrying about them. Because worrying is not affecting them. Worrying is affecting you. You remember what God promised you. God says they will not stand before you. They will not last. Believe God's promises. If you're going to win in your battle, you must believe God's promises. And one of them is that, behold, I'll be with you even until the end of the age. Let me close up. Let's just look at another uh, passage of scripture in Joshua again. Joshua chapter 11 and verse 6. If, if you are not built in confidence on this, then you can't be built again. And the Lord said unto Joshua, be not be afraid of them. For tomorrow about this time, I will deliver them of all slain before Israel. Thou shalt hop their horses and burn their chariots with fire. God says it. That settles it. Glory to God. Who, who else can get the glory? Believe God's promises. Number six. Number seven, which is what I'm going to close with this morning. Verse 10. Very important point. Even though God has reduced the army down to 300, Gideon has seen all that God has done. I want to make mention of something that came, came to me, and it's Joyce Meyer. And this is what she said. The book, she, the last book I remember she wrote. She said, do it afraid. Whatever God tells you to do, even though there is there's a, is, is a bit of fear, she says, do it afraid. Let me say this to you. I don't want to send around the impression that this, that God's servant do not have time or period when they become afraid or there's a level of fear when, when they're doing um, are about to do what God have, have told them to do because when they look at the situation sometimes fear comes in but watch this this is what God said Gideon in verse 10 but if thou fear to go down go thou with poor thy servant down to the host and thou shalt hear what they say and afterward shall thy hand be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then he went down with poor his servant unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host. Let me say this to you. God wanted Gideon to gain the victory with 300 men. But there are times in our lives that even though we have those 300 men around us, we need an encourager. Pura was Gideon's encourager. Watch this. I don't care how close you are to anyone in church. I don't care how close you are to someone around. Sometimes, whether it's your husband or your wife, a very close friend, a long time friend, let me tell you something. When certain times come, let God pick the person that he wants to be around you at the time to encourage you. In this scenario that we're looking at here, God says, listen, if you are afraid to go down, take Pura with you. You know what that means? We must have somebody around us that is a confidant, that is an encourager, that is a faithful person who trusts in God. Because let me say this, there are times when the child of God, when the servant of God sometimes reaches a place and he needs Aaron and her to hold up his hand. 
Keturah was that encourager for Gideon. David had Jonathan. We need to understand that if we're going to win, these things must be set in place. And as I close this morning, I relatively just want to say this as I close out this morning. This is what it is. We are already conquerors. We are not victims, but victors. I want to talk to someone of God's children this morning to let you know that yes, the situation exists, but God has you covered. That battle is not yours. Don't get stressed over it. Don't allow your pressure to go up over it. God have you covered. Hey, you broke, you think God don't know? Hey, people are trying to consume you, you think God don't know? Listen, if you remember these, I can guarantee you that at the end of the day, at the end of the day, God is going to take care of you. Father, remember that woman, that man this morning. Those of your children that God are at this moment trembling in fear. Lord, remember those who are wondering where the next meal is going to come from or what's going to happen next, where the next job is going to come because Lord, some have just lost their job, some have lost their husbands, some have lost their wives, and there's so many things. And God, the battle, instead of getting easier, has become more difficult. Thank you for strength. Thank you for being with us in the battle. Thank you for being with us in the fire. Thank you that God, we are fighting from a standpoint of winners and not, and not and losers. Thank you for what you're doing and for what you're about to do. May that child of yours, may that person who is going through difficult times at this moment call upon you and I know you will hear and I know you will answer and show them great and mighty things that they don't know of. And so this morning I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. See you next week. God bless you.